Hey there! In this video we are going to look at the basic sine and cosine functions. We're going to start by generating the graphs dynamically while looking at the unit circle. Then we're going to look at the two functions numerically using a table and a spreadsheet. And then we're going to summarize some of the main features of these two very important functions. Alright, so we'll start with the graph of y equals sine x. Now to generate the graph and kind of see why it looks the way it does, we have the unit circle over here and we can see then the ratios that we get uh, as the angle progresses around here. The sine ratio is of course the the y coordinate divided by the radius in any circle uh, and if it's the unit circle then it's the y coordinate divided by 1 so it's just the y coordinate. So to visualize the sine graph and generate it here we can just follow the y coordinate as we move around here. So it's going to be a little red line segment in here as we move which is also going to be duplicated over here that you can follow and then the graph's going to get traced out here. So just to make this clear the x values are the angles as we go around. It's not the x coordinates and y coordinates in our unit circle, it's the angles as we go around. x is the angles as we go around, y is the sine ratio for those angles. Alright, so we'll start moving around here and change this angle. Of course sine starts at zero and then as you make the angle bigger that red line segment is getting bigger and bigger and so the graph as you go towards pi over 2 heads up to 1. The maximum it's going to be is 1 because this line segment here, the y coordinate can never be bigger than the radius, so the sine ratio can never be bigger than 1. That's the maximum. It hits its maximum there at pi over 2, and then it starts coming back down again. And it starts coming down again and hits 0 again at pi as you go around there because that line segment ends up being 0 there. And as you continue along here, it goes into the, the negatives now because in quadrant 3, the sine ratio becomes negative because that y coordinate's negative. And as you keep going here, it hits a minimum of negative 1. Because, again, the y coordinate can't be bigger than the radius. So the y coordinate's negative 1 there, radius is 1, so the sine ratio is negative 1. And then it's going to turn around and come back up to 0 here, right? Because it hits 0 there. And then after that, you're into a second rotation, and the pattern is just going to repeat itself. All right, so we, we don't have enough screen here to show one more complete piece of the pattern, but you can imagine off screen there, that pattern's just going to keep repeating. All right, now the other direction here, if we were to go backwards, it's going to follow the same pattern. In, we go backwards here into quadrant four, the sine ratio is negative, so it goes down here again. It's going to bottom out at negative one again for the same reason, and then it's going to be back up at zero there at negative pi and then we're into quadrant two so it's positive and up there and so again we run out of screen there but you're gonna have the same pattern follow along over there this function is a periodic function because you have this repeating pieces of a pattern the same values happen over and over again the length of one piece of the pattern here is two pi after you get to two pi the pattern keeps repeating the pattern is it starts at zero, the values go up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, back up to zero, and then that pattern repeats. So you say the period of this graph, this periodic function, the period is two pi, the length of one cycle of the graph. You call that one piece of the pattern, you call it a cycle, and the length of one cycle is the period. All right, now we're gonna look at the cosine graph and generate it kind of the same way here. Actually, let's uh, get this back to zero first. So we'll get it back to zero and we're going to switch to cosine. Now cosine, this line is already up at one here because at zero, an angle of zero, cosine follows the x-coordinate just like sine follows the y-coordinate. Cosine is the x-coordinate in a unit circle and at an angle of zero, that x-coordinate is one. So cosine starts at one and for the same reasons, it's not going to go beyond 1. It's going to start going down from there because 1 is the maximum it can be for the same reason as for sine. Can't go beyond 1. So those values are going to head down towards 0 as you go. And you get a cosine value of 0 when you hit that angle of pi over 2. And then as you go into quadrant 2 here, the cosine values go negative for a little while, right? Quadrant 2, they're negative, and they go down to a low of negative 1 there. 
And then, again, the same reason. It can't go beyond negative 1, and it starts to head back up to 0 here in quadrant 3. It's still negative in quadrant 3, hits 0 there, and now it's positive in quadrant 4. So it kind of matches what you've seen before, and then that, uh, that pattern just continues. It hits its maximum of 1, and then goes back down to 0, down to negative 1, and then off the screen there, that pattern would continue. Into the other side here, into the negatives, if we, if we go into negative angles, quadrant 4 cosine's positive, right? We're in quadrant 4 here, and uh, cosine's positive. It's positive until you hit negative pi over 2 there, and then it becomes negative when you're in quadrant 3 here. You're in quadrant 3, you're negative there, and then you're still negative in quadrant 2, but it's heading back up to 0. So that same thing happens there. So that looks pretty similar to what we had for the sine graph. It has a maximum of 1, a minimum of negative 1. It repeats every 2 pi. The period is 2 pi because it's at its maximum point there at the beginning. And the next time it hits its maximum point is 2 pi. So that period is 2 pi. The big difference is where it starts in its cycle. Cosine starts at a maximum point. It starts at the top of one of these peaks here. Sine, if you remember, started in the middle on the way up. Cosine starts at the top on the way down. All right, so that's the big difference between the two, but the shape of the graph is the same. The values that it hits are the same. And to get a better sense of those values from a numeric point of view, we're going to switch over to looking at a spreadsheet right now. All right, so we have a table here set up where we have the angles, x, and the sine and cosine ratios for those angles. Those are the y-coordinates from our two graphs. So we'll start with sine. We'll fill this down here. All right, of course, sine at 0 is 0, and then as the angle gets bigger, the ratio gets bigger. So if we continue this down here now, we get to there. Uh, ratios go up from 0 to 1. As the angle goes up to, this is pi over 2 half of 3.14 roughly, 1.57, and we're up to 1 here. And then now if we continue it up to there, we get to pi, basically. Those ratios come back down to 0, right? So we've gone from 0 up to 1, back down to 0. If we continue going here now, if we go another through quadrant 3. As we move into quadrant 3, those values become negative now because sine is negative in quadrant 3. Those angles go to 3 pi over 2, 3 quarters of the way around. And then to finish it off here, one cycle of the graph, we get down to there. The angles go up to 2 pi, one full rotation, and the angles are, they were down at negative 1, and then they're back up to 0. If we do the same thing for cosine, if we go back up to the top here, if we fill these down, we'll go down to pi over 2 there. Those values go from 1 down to 0, as we saw in the graph. It's the same numbers you see here, just in the reverse order, because the shape of the graph's the same. So all those values are the same, just in that reverse order. If we continue going down from here to pi, we're going to go into the negatives now, because quadrant 2, cosine is negative, of course. If we keep going here, it's still going to be negative. But now those values are headed from negative 1 back up to 0. And then to finish it off there, it goes into the positives in quadrant 4, because co cosine is positive in quadrant 4. And then those values come up to 1 again. All right. So that's a look at those two functions numerically. Now we're going to look at how to make a quick hand-drawn sketch of each of those functions and summarize some of their main features. Alright, so to draw the graph of sine by hand, we're going to use some key points. We know it starts at 0, and we know that the maximum is 1, so we're going to put a dotted line there and a dotted line at negative 1, the minimum, and use those as our guides. And we know that at 2 pi it's back at 0, and at pi it's at 0. Halfway between the first two it's up at the top, halfway between the second two it's down at the bottom. And then we can just continue that pattern along here because we know it's going to repeat. And then we can even go into the negatives with that pattern as well. And then those points, we can just trace the curve on here. We'll go to the positive side first. This is a pretty rough curve, but it's uh, about what it looks like. And then into the negatives there. So that's a rough sketch of what sine looks like. We'll do the same thing for cosine. Now, cosine is different. It starts at 1. 
We know that that's the maximum. We'll do another line there and a line at negative one. Use those as guides. We know that at two pi, it's back up at the top. So halfway between those two, it has to be at the bottom at pi. And then halfway between the first two, it's in the middle. And halfway between the second two, it's in the middle. So that's kind of plotting out one cycle of the graph. We can draw it even now before we plot out the rest. For these subsequent cycles here, we'll just do the exact same thing. Four pi, it's at the top. So three pi, it's got to be at the bottom, halfway, each there. Six pi, it's at the top. Five pi, it's at the bottom, halfway again. Put another dot there. And then we can trace that curve out. Oop, I overshot the point there at four pi a little bit. And we can go into the negatives, plot out one more cycle. Again, trace that out. And there you go, that's the cosine curve. And then some of the things we saw before, since these functions are composed of repetitive cycles, at regular intervals over the domain, they are called periodic functions. The length of one cycle is called the period of the function. And something we didn't see before is what the height of the function is called as in the height from the center line. So from here up to the top or from there down to the bottom, that distance is called the amplitude. It's a positive number always. And in this case, it's, it's one. All right, so let's summarize just some of the features here. The period was two pi. The amplitude, as I said just now, was one. The maximum's one, highest it goes, lowest it goes is negative one, the minimum. The domain, it covers all possible angles. There's no restrictions on it, so the domain is all real numbers for both of those functions. The range has to do with this max and this min here. It can't go outside of those two values, so y is greater than or equal to negative one, less than or equal to one for both of those functions, sine and cosine. So lots of similarities there between sine and cosine. But as you saw before, there's one pretty significant difference. Sine starts in the middle of that up and down pattern on the way up, and cosine starts at the top and heads down. All right, so that is an introduction to the basic graphs of sine and cosine.